everyone. Today we have Dr. Gaurav Kataria as a guest speaker. And uh, he is currently working as an assistant professor in Manipal Institute, Jaipur. He is doctorate in chemical engineering from MIT, Jaipur. His area of research is uh, soft sensor modeling and simulation and process control. And so on behalf of my department, chemical engineering, science, technology, pharmacy, I welcome you, sir. And uh, we would like to hear from you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Shivendu. So, thanks a lot for inviting me again. Uh, I think I remember the last time we were together with virtually only. So, uh, can I start? Sure, sir. Just give me a minute. Are my slides visible? Yeah. So, okay. Thanks a lot, Dr. Shivindu. Uh, with your permission, I'll start. Uh, so, first of all, uh, good morning to all of you. And thanks a lot for giving me an opportunity to discuss about this particular topic. Uh, so process intensification in physical and heat transfer units. Earlier, it was process intensification in chemical engineering. But that uh, topic was getting too vast for the one hour lecture. So I just segmented into two parts. First one part is process intensification in physical and heat transfer units. And the next part we can discuss it later. Uh, that will be the process intensification in uh, chemical reaction and separation units. So when we are talking about the process intensification, first of all, we need to know what is process intensification. Whenever I'm talking about the chemical industry, everything starts with the chem uh, chemistry experiment. That is a basic. You can say difference between the chemistry uh, and the chemical engineers. We all always get confused with the chemistry students. So first of all, what is the difference in chemistry and chemical engineering? Uh, the chemistry deals with the lab, uh, lab size equipments, lab size scale um, processes. And from that lab scale to the industry scale to the consumer scale, that is dealt with the chemical engineers. Okay. So whenever I'm talking about the process intensification, whenever we go for the lab scale equipment, you are easily get the, uh, you can say whenever I'm going with the reaction, you easily, you can easily get the uh, purity of 92%, 95%, even 99% in the lab scale. But when we are going to scale it up, when we are going to scale it up, it's not that efficient. Why? Uh, earlier, there used to be a term that in the case of chemical equipment, bigger is better. But that bigger is better was for the demand purpose. That bigger is better for the increasing population purpose. Right now, bigger is not that better in the in case of chemical equipment. Why? Because as soon as you increase the volume of the particular equipment, you uh, for the demand of the, you can say, market demand to increase the size of a reactor, the surface area point volume ratio decreases. Because of that decrease in the ratio, the contact area, the contact area get decreased as per the feed load. And because of that particular thing, the efficiency decreases. So the same thing that we are finding 92 to 95% in the lab scale, it will be, uh, I'll, I'll not say that uh, absolutely 80%, but it will be close to 80% or even less than that. Or you can say that 80 to 85%. So that is the case. That is a difference in chemistry and chemi chemi chemical history. When I'm going for the 82 to 85%, I have a base case. Okay, My ultimate motive will be to increase the either efficiency, decrease the capital or safety and other things. So that is the case of process intensification. Whenever I'm going to, you can say, increase the accuracy, increase the efficiency, or in short, I'm making the process more efficient or cheaper or safer. The techniques that will be used to go uh, will be dealing with that will be the process intensification. So as uh, you can say recommended by the Rike and Ramshaw, any development which is making the existing process more sustainable, smaller, cleaner, safer, or more energy efficient, or in whole of this case, making it, uh, you can say, economically <clears throat> better, that is the process intensification. So according to the, as uh, we used to know, everything starts from a batch reactor. Whenever everything starts with a batch reactor, we just go for two reactants, we mix each other, we agitate and we get the product. But um, as the demand increases, we 
switched it to uh, CSGR and PFR. After that, a lot of other, you can see reactors are also getting uh, uh, developed for the particular application. So according to that, there has to be a huge difference in the earlier technologies and the current technologies. But are we still um, way beyond uh, the way we were started? But the answer is no. The answer is no. Why? Because still few methods. You can see over here in 1556, these containers were having agitators. And in 2002, the containers burst. There was a uh, earlier used to be a wood containers. Now it's a metal container. Uh, it went for the iron containers, stainless steel containers. And the, uh, you can say the process is getting um, better. But still the scale is not as different as it used to be 400 to 500 uh, years earlier. But is it is process int uh, intensification occurs? Yes, answer is yes. Now you can see over here, there's an example. Whenever there was a case when we uh, want to make a methyl acetate, uh, the methyl acetate is being, uh, you can say, processed using acetic acid and methanol. This is particularly a stratification reaction, but the problem in this uh, case is the reaction is re reversible. Because of that particular, particularly reversibility, particular, you can say this sign, this, the conversion is re restricted. You can't get a hundred percent, uh, you can say methyl acetate because there will be some contact between the methyl acetate and water. There will be the backward reaction. Okay. Everybody knows the Lee Chatelier principle. Because of this, they, the conversion is restricted. More problem is that reaction is easier but after that you have to get the separation also and separation is not that easy task as we think it of so ultimately uh, methyl acetate water acetic acid and methanol are there in the reactor which are going to the you can say the uh, separation units you can see over here around eight sets of distillation columns in the form of normal distillation extractive distillation liquid extraction flash columns or azeotropic columns these are being earlier these were being used so what was the per particular plant a reactor eight columns decanter these things were earlier used to uh, you can say produce the methyl acetate from acetic acid and methanol in the presence of a wreck catalyst and uh, at a certain temperature pressure conditions so what happened is over there is you can uh, just visualize the scale of the plant that was used earlier when we uh, the methyl acid was getting uh, you can say produced now this whole unit has been transformed to just a single distillation column using a particular you can say technique which is rdc that is reactive distillation column what is there in this reactive distillation column is that there's a distillation column but instead of trays we have a packing over here Behind this, there are trays. Above this column, there's some trays. What happens in this is that this packing contains a catalyst embedded in that particular packing, so you can say pores. What happens, the lighter, uh, the heavier component, the heavier reactant come from the upward uh, section since because of the gravity and because of the less temperature, this acetic acid will go downwards and the lighter component it will uh, as soon as it reaches the column it will evaporate it will evaporate and the uh, both the reactants meet inside this particular section in the presence of catalyst they form methyl acetate and water because of this particular contact in the presence of catalyst and it, in the presence of temperature that particular temperature and pressure conditions a product is formed my main mo for motive is to separate this methyl acetate and water as soon as methyl acetate and water is getting formed the distillation because of the temperature gradient methyl acetate goes upwards because because of the high volatility and water goes downwards because of the low volatility the best part over here is we are not giving them, we are not allowing them enough time so that methyl acetate and water can meet with each other with the same temperature pressure conditions with the presence of catalyst. Because as soon as the methyl acetate and water, uh, you can say, meet with each other, there'll be a reaction, backward reaction, which will form back acetic acid and methanol. So as soon as the reaction is, uh, forward reaction is taking place, the separation is also taking place. We are not allowing methyl acetate and water to meet with each other. And because of that, first of all, there's a high conversion because uh, we are 
restricting the reversible reaction. Second, the azeotropic formation uh, is restricted because as soon as, as methyl acid and water is getting removed, we are not providing them that particular conditions of temperature, pressure and composition that azeotropes can be formed. You know, azeotropic uh, mixtures are difficult to separate. So we are restricting that. Another thing, one more better thing what we are ob obtaining is as soon as the products are getting removed, the byproducts, the side reactions are also not getting uh, are not taking place this is the you can say the scale where the process intensification is going on from the eight columns and one reactor we are just using one column which is the reactive distillation column and two sub uh, you can say sub columns which are just to remove the impurities and heavy compounds this is the example of process intensification and this actually exists in the case of uh, you can say uh, current industrialization so what is the basically target of a process intensification? Because ultimately, I'll not use the word process intensification. What is the basic target for the chemical engineer? I don't want to see that uh, acres of land is being occupied by the industry. I don't want to see the big distillation columns. I just want to see here, you can say a complex, uh, you'll see a, a official building, which is actually a industry. I want to see that all these columns are to be fitted in this particular, you can say, building. I don't know at, at which year I'll be getting, but my ultimate target is this only. And as you, uh, you might know, the industry 4.0, it is working towards the IoT, Internet of Things, and other process intensification techniques. We can see that this is not too far, but uh, it's still far. First of all, uh, now we, everything goes with the benefits. Okay. Main ultimate goal is I want to have a higher profits. Okay. So ultimately, I'm getting a cheaper processes. Big why? Because as soon as I'm getting the more efficiency, my energy consumption is getting down. My energy consumption is getting down because of this. I'm saving a lot of money. Because of this, my company image is also getting better because of uh, restricting the side reactions my waste and my byproducts are also getting uh, lesser and more of that since uh, i'm getting them a better uh, you can say surface area better interfacial area my size of equipment is decreasing because of the size of equipment my size of industry is decreasing because of my decrease in uh, size of industry my land cost is uh, getting saved my land cost is getting saved and also my inventory is getting saved uh, another thing is my processes are also getting safer because ultimately safety is a first priority. First safety is a first priority, not in the case of uh, you can say argue, we can argue with the, the Indian standards, uh, but safety is a first priority because human life is way you can say costlier than the equipment cost. So safety will be getting better and the market time will be getting decreased. Next is PI toolbox. Ultimately, I want to achieve a process intensification. How can we do it? Just talk about the Haber process. What is actually there in the Haber process? We are producing ammonia from the nitrogen and hydrogen. If I'm thinking of uh, intensifying that process, I have uh, two options. First of all, either I can go for another process, another process which can create, which can, uh, you can say, produce ammonia from let's say other reactants or other, other conditions by because of which my process is getting intensified my process is getting intensified means uh, i'm getting better efficiency i'm getting safer process i'm getting you can say uh, cheaper less inventory i'm getting uh, less byproducts either i can go for the different method of producing ammonia or in the case of Haber process only, I can change the equipments. These equipment, because of these particular equipments, I'm getting the better efficiency or better other things that is included in the process intensification. So when I'm going for the equip change in equipments, I can go for either different reactors, over here, spinning disc reactors, static mixer reactors, monolithic reactor, micro reactors, or equipments for non-reactive operations. That means for the separation process or for the mixing process, or for the heat exchange process, static mixers, compact heat exchangers, rotating packed pad, centrifugal absorber. In the case of process intensification, whenever you will uh, start reading from a book or you can say from any article, the first thing that comes to the mind is rotation. 
because of the rotation there's a better contact because of that particular better contact we are getting better results so in the case of equipments we can go for the uh, different design of the reactors from heat exchangers and separation column in the case of methods there can be you can say multifunctional reactors where reaction and separation is included in particular or oh, one unit only we can use the uh, fuel cells we can use the heat integrated reactors we can go for the hybrid separations we can go for the alternative energy resources in the case of energy ultimately we are going for shell and tube heat exchangers generally we are going for a shell and tube heat exchangers or double pipe heat exchangers okay but instead of that we can also uh, move to the another energy sources like solar energy or wind energy centrifugal fields ultrasounds electric fields microwaves these particular ultrasound microwave electric fields these seems to be little costlier than the uh, you can say existing techniques but these are way efficient than the existing technique so ultimately if we are go going for a proper economic analysis if we can make because ultimately a lot of research is going on over this uh, you can say topic where we need to we are trying to make these particular uh, source of energy cheaper than the existing one so that we can ultimately uh, you can say Take an alternative of these particular energy sources as compared to the existing sources. Another method is use of supercritical fluids, dynamic processes uh, like uh, dynamic reaction operations and process synthesis. Now, sustainability of PI. First of all, how we think of that we need to make it. We need to intensify the process. First of all, we go for a base case. Everything go for the base uh, goes for the base case. First of all, we develop a base case where one thing is leading to the another thing we are getting a particular efficiency we are getting the particular byproducts we are getting the particular uh, you can say heat loads we are getting the particular uh, capital income so my thinking will be i don't want to restrict myself to this particular case only why because we ultimately there will be a competition ultimately there will be a competition i need to survive in this particular competition for that i have to make this thing more profitable so that after even having a uh, multiple um compete uh, you can say uh, competition from the market i'm still sustaining in this uh, particular business right now i might be saving 80 rupees but after uh, getting a higher competition the profit can be decreased to 40 rupees but for that i need to go for uh you can say but uh, since my capital cost is 30 over here i need to decrease it to 10 how will we be doing it i'll be considering the base case i'll be particularly giving thoughts i'll be trying to reduce the waste i'll be trying to increase the yield i'll be trying to improve the impact uh, environmental factors because ultimately environment because of the environment norms you uh, a lot of money is getting consumed to you can say uh, clean that particular industrial water to clean that particular air so i need to uh, make a better units which will restrict from the source end only so what i'll do i'll uh, start analyzing the particular process i'll uh, start analyzing the base case and i'll go for an alternative i'll go for a new technique new units which will be better from the base unit and that unit after uh, the prior proper you can say testing and you can say uh, analyzing that case will be now a base case then case that you have you can say the process that you have developed uh, just now this will be the base case from now onwards this base case i'll be after, earlier i was getting 80 percent efficiency now i'm getting 90 percent policy i'll not restrict myself to 90 percent only i'll start the process again i'll start the process again i'll try to make this 90 to 92 94 and the process goes on till the best results are getting obtained this is the particular sustainability of process intensification now i'll start with the process intensification in physical methods whenever i'm talking about the physical methods that i mean to say momentum transport i mean to say momentum transport the best thing that comes to my mind is agitators frankly if you know the uh, chemical industry there are very few units which consumes energy uh, i mean electrical energy one is pumps second is compressors and the another one is agitators besides this every reactor every distillation column every uh, other units they all work on the heat load that is uh, produced using uh, you can say uh, heated streams used from the heat exchangers so these are the basic three units which uh, consumes maximum amount of energy and this mainly these are the units which uh, contains movable parts movable parts means 
more you can say uh, care need to be taken care of these particular equipments so what happens in agitation ultimately we all know there's either a parallel flow or there's a axial flow because of this particular flow will be getting a mixture homogenized or you can say uh, will mix up particular feed streams or solids or liquids will use the agitators another thing another one back that we cannot use any agitator to any application these particular agitators will be highly application uh, specific uh, for example if there is a vortex formation because of the uh, low viscosity will use the multiple uh, you can say multiple agitators to remove the vortex formation okay uh, similarly I, i cannot use the same multiple agitator to a high viscous compound you can say I'm, i can use the same rpm ag agitator to a high viscous liquid because there will be a, a lot of shear friction between the because of that particular thing so we have to design put these particular agitators as per uh, application basis only but still every agitator consumes energy to uh, get the particular rpm this is being intensified using the static mixtures what is happening over here first of all there is no uh, you can say and uh, electric energy consumed in this particular static mixers what happens in this static mixers is we are having a pipe fittings we are having a uh, you can say pipe inserts there'll be pipe there'll be insert what happen in this particular inserts there'll be a, you can say create a shear distortion there will be some twist there will be some um, splitting because of this twist and splitting the back mixing is happening because of that particular the collision is happening because of that collision the uh, fields are you can say liquids are getting mixed and because of that we are getting a how more energy efficient mixing because of this particular uh, you can say distortions there's no consumption of elect uh, electricity we are over here you can see there's two feed streams okay as soon as they uh, get in contact with the distortions as soon as they getting the distortions they start mixing with each other right because of the you can say sudden splitting the sudden twisting there's some sudden collisions you can see over here as uh, this particular thing will be transformed to this to this to this to this to this and to this you can see over here uh, earlier there used to be just a uh, one uh, white line of a single uh, you can say liquid this will be for the second liquid and after the six multiple uh, twists and turns you're getting this much homogeneity uh, homogeneity for the particular mixing purpose over here you can see when there is no static mixers the white liquid will move like this way the blue liquid will move like this way and the white liquid will move like from here input to output there will be no uh, you can say mixing that that is you can see visible but as soon as uh, i create the uh, distortions the i contain particularly we can see over here there is a small baffles inside that particular uh, system in the on the pipe because of this particular distortions because of the particular dis uh, disturbances there is mi some mixing going on between these particular two liquids over here you can see from the input to output and there is some mixing that has uh, happened because of this particular static mixtures you can see over here how oh, white and blue is uh, absolutely clearly different from the input and, and over here it is mixed one this is a mixed stream similarly if i'm using the 16 sets of you can say pipe fittings which are containing the static mixers how we are uh, you can say inserting this if block over here is like this way the second block will be totally perpendicular to this particular thing as soon as the uh, liquid from this uh, opening is getting uh, from first uh, unit to second unit there will be a simultaneously a steel unit over here which will be in contact with the this particular white openings this because of this co collision there will be some back mixing there will be because of this particular back mixing there will be mixing between the streams because of this you can see a way higher or uh, you can say homogeneity has been uh, found from 1 to 16 because of this particular five fittings let's just uh, go for a video demonstration for this uh, static mixers this is for the better visualization this is a canex type mixer there will be two streams you can see over here one is blue stream one is orange stream because of this uh, twist and turns that degree of mixing is uh, increasing as soon as 
uh, more uh, mixing units are taking place. Yeah. In the end, the after you can say you can decide how many number of twist turns you, uh, that you want, and this can uh, achieve you to the better homogeneity. More will be the twist and turns. Better will be the mixing between uh, between the streams. And uh, from the inlet to outlet, you can see over here a uh, blue and pink or uh, orange. Uh, you can particles are way well mixed than the input streams. This is the case of static mixer. Ultimately, where can I use? I can use it in the vectors also. Okay, this is still better than CSCR. Why? Because the size requirement over here is low. Ultimately, what really happened in the CSCR? Uh, we take a vessel, we take an agitator, uh, and that agitator, uh, purpose of that agitator to mix the reactant stream so that product can be formed. So ultimately, what I'll what I'll be doing, I'll go for reactant A, I'll go for reactant B, which will uh, this will contain uh, you can say a static mixers because of this distortion, because of this mixing purpose, the better contact between the uh, reactants can take place, and because of that particular better reactant, uh, you can say there'll be a better conversion of the product. Formation uh, that can be seen from the uh, outer outlet of this particular stream. Size requirement will be low. Equipment cost will be low. Power requirement only pumping uh, uh, power is required over here. CSCR your pumping uh, is also required and agitator power is also required. Moving parts over here there is only a pumping uh, pump which is having a moving part over here. See in CSCR the feed stream that is being pumped that uh, that pump that agitator and seals are also will be the moving parts. Residence time will be shorter in, uh, in static mixers as compared to, you can say, CSDR flow conditions. Uh, in the case of uh, static mixer, a sort of plug flow conditions are being obtained. And we all know that the plug flow conditions are way better than the CSDR. And the maintenance cost is very uh, easy. Why? Because ultimately, these are just fittings. You can easily pull that uh, these fittings. You can wash them fitting. You can wash it and insert it back. But in the case of CSDR, we need to clean that whole vessel from the conserve right end. Some examples of static mixers you can see over here. This, there's a canic mixture. There's a low pressure drop mixer. These are SMV. Um, S stands for I don't, don't remember. Uh, Selzer. Inline mixers, cells are, uh, a mixer, uh, setting mixer. Ultimately, you can see the only difference is the type of blades that is being used. Over here, this is helical. Over here, there's a, a 45, or you can say perpendicular uh, semi disc. This is a very high distortion. These are the semi disc of, uh, in the 90 degree direction, and this is also helical in the different sets. What, what is happening in this particular thing is, first of all, these all are patent designs. Okay, these are not just like agitators that we go to the market and we can find any agitator or normal agitator and we'll, we can use it in our application. These all are patent designs from different, uh, you can say, big industries. If you need to use this, you need to, first of all, buy the rights. So, ultimately, what is happening in the static mixers is uh, these are very application specific. These are very application specific. The application lies from the low viscosity to high viscosity. Like this SMV, you cannot this use this particular uh, static mixer for a highly viscous compound. Why? Because there will be a lot of pressure drop. There will be a lot of, because of that particular bag mixing, there will be a lot of pressure drop and it will be very difficult to take high viscous compound from uh, liquid from here to here. So you cannot use uh, this particular design for a highly viscous compound, but this is highly uh, considered for the better, you can say, mixing, the uh, degree of mixing. For the highly viscous compound, you can go for the low pressure drop because uh, there will be uh, low pressure drop, there will be low back mixing in this particular thing. You can, uh, over here, uh, this is better for the high viscosity liquid and this will be better for the low viscosity liquid but in the case of uh, mixing this will uh, give you the better mixing as compared to this so for this you have to get, go for the uh, bigger you can say static mixer piping as compared to smb but still uh, the thing is you'll you cannot you'll be not using the same uh, you can say static mixers for every application because it can be not recommended why because it can ultimately mix uh, any stream but the thing is there will be higher pressure drops there will be uh high residence time there will be different uh, you can say timing that is being consumed by the reactants or you can say the streams in the uh column which will be a costlier for a industry persona 
this these particular static mixers are being used in the industries also you can see over here there's a static mixer in the gas dehydration unit there's a static mixer in the ccr reformer there's a static mixer in the gas treating unit these are the this is the case of the static mixer now we'll talk about the high g contractor high g means high gravity high gravity well, as i already told you the basic uh, funda of using the mixer is i want to have a better contact between the streams it can be liquid liquid stream it can be solid liquid stream it can be liquid gas stream but in the case of normal agitator we cannot use it for the liquid and gas because the contact is not uh, that efficient for the liquid gas contact what we use we use the pack uh, packings for the packing purpose the ultimately will having a uh, different you can say uh, void fraction and different pore uh, pore fraction and because of that uh, there'll be a counter uh, you can say counter current contact between the liquid and the gas and in between these packing the liquid gas will be getting in contact with each other what happens if we rotate that particular packing there will be the better contact between the liquid gas and uh, you can say streams so there will be the higher uh, you can say mass transfer there will be a higher heat transfer there will be higher, better uh, reaction uh, happening over there what happen is over there that we let the liquid uh, get inside from this particular stream we get let the vapor stream from over here as soon as this particular packing uh, is getting rotated from this rotator shaft the liquid moves to the periphery and the vapor moves towards the axis and this is the place where the contact between the liquid and gas takes place which is as efficient more efficient than the conventional pack bed reactor you can see over here the scale of it that in the when i'm going for the equivalent stage height and when i'm comparing the normal pack bed reactor uh, normal packing to the uh, you can say high g contractor 1.5 cm is of packing is required in the case of this yes, rotating rotating shaft reactor uh, rotating shaft column as compared to the 60 cm in conventional pack column this is the scale of a process intensification that is being achieved using the high g contractors this is uh, these are the just uh, two examples which uh, the others examples also exist for for example oscillatory baffle tubes um, the vibrational columns where the contact between the you can say uh, different feed streams can be increased using either the oscillations or the vibrations the next is pi in heart heat transfer my ultimate motive that when i'm a, i'm a, like i'm an engineer in the industry my ultimate motive will be to uh, that god of please uh, this is a hot stream of under uh, 120 degree centigrade you have to take it down which to the 30 degree centigrade i'll say okay give me the shunt tube heat exchanger uh, give me this much passes give me this much this big heat exchanger i'll i'll you can say uh, take the temperature 120 to 30 degree in let's say 15 minutes or 40 minutes 45 minutes as as so like uh, you can say the requirements that have been given to me what i want to intensify this heat transfer i am uh, personally saying no god of you are not having 45 to 50 minutes you are getting just 15 to 20 minutes and take that particular process from uh, take this particular stream from 120 degree to 30 degree i'll say okay i have to intensify that process how will uh, you can say intensify the process i want to increase the q q that is the rate of heat transfer since my delta t is fixed how i can increase the uh, you can say uh, my q either using by increasing the u or by increasing the a u uh, we all know the overall heat transfer coefficient overall heat transfer coefficient can be increased either by putting the more turbulence in the system either by uh, you can say using the better metal of the uh, equipment or by creating secondary flows and another process is using a by increasing the area first of all increasing the area doesn't mean you'll increase the size of the equipment as i already told you if you'll increase the size of the equipment by increasing the volume but that will uh, lower down the surface area point volume ratio if i'm going with the increasing area that means increase in the interfacial surface area that means increase in the contact area this is uh, this can be increased using the compact heat exchangers earlier what we used to do is we used to go for like over here hot stream from this side cold stream for this side okay 
because of this contact between these particular two streams, I'm getting my, you can say, requirement of uh, lowering down the temperature or increasing the temperature. Is I'll ask the liquid elements, which is over here, are they getting the uh, enough time or you can say enough contact between the liquid, uh, between, uh, between the walls, okay, so that more accuracy can be obtained in the case of pipes, it's not. So what I'll do is I'll decrease the size of the pipe. I'll decrease the size of the pipe so that the uh, liquid in contact with walls is as higher as I want. Because the ultimately surface area is the area of this stream, the, uh, sorry, this wall, the area of this wall. I'll increase the contact area because of this particular higher contact area, I'll get a better heat flow. What uh, they do is instead of pipes, they use the uh, plates. This is a plate heat exchanger. What they do is they uh, they take a corrugated uh, plates. They get the corrugated plate, the uh, corrugated metal plates. This corrugation is for the create, uh, creation of some turbulence. What happens is the one stream that is let's say cold stream is passing through this hot uh, this plate, and consecutively the next plate is containing hot stream. Next cold plate next hot plate and simultaneously n number of uh, you can say uh, plates are to be uh, are stacked are fitted with each other so that i can get a better you can say heat exchange from this particular heat exchanger these particular trays are either gasketed you can see the gaskets over here these gaskets are for the better removal so that i can easily wash and clean the particular plates or uh, if the um, cleaning is not a big concern to you, then it the best part will be to weld each other, weld with each other. This can be, uh, the working of this can be shown using this particular video. You can see over here, these are the fittings. These are the uh, plates that are having some corrugation. This corrugation is for the turbulence. This blue sign shows that this is only for the cold feet. So ultimately, uh, hot, uh, hot feed is going uh, from one end and it is getting distributed by leaving one plate which will be containing the blue liquid which will be the colder liquid. And because of this particular flow, because of this high, uh, you can say, uh, contact area, the Q is getting increased because I'm getting a better A with this particular system. Similarly, as per, uh, as you have used the spiral, uh, plate heat exchanger, you can also use the spiral heat exchanger. This, the case will be the same. You can see over here, there's one plate, this uh, next spiral, this is a third spiral. This will be, let's say for hot fluid, this will be for the cold fluid. This will be for cold fluid and this will be for hot fluid. Ultimately, I'm providing them the better contact area by decreasing the size of the channel to as low as I can. And these particular things, these are the buffers that are uh, happening, uh, uh, that are creating the turbulence, which will be increasing my uh, you also. You can see the working of this also in this particular video. Ultimately, I'm having a shell where the multiple spirals are uh, fitted with each other. These spirals are fitted in such a way that the green will give you, uh, green, this red will be for the hotter fluid. You can see a channel is vacant, which will be uh, used for the cold fluid. Remember one thing, these fittings are that intact that First of all, we need not to have a contact between the hot and cold fluid. We don't, we need not to make, we don't want that there's a mixing between the two fluids is happening over here. So the, uh, you can say the ceiling of this particular place that we were earlier talking about, the ceiling of the spirals has to be that intact. There's a no contact between the no leakages uh, is happening over here. And we can get a better heat exchange because of the higher area that is uh, being created because of this particular heat exchanger. Similar to plate and um, you can say plate ex exchanger, there's another heat exchanger, plate and shell heat exchanger. So earlier we used to study the shell and tube heat exchanger. What was there in the shell and tube heat exchanger? We used to see like this. This was tube side flow. This was shell side flow. 
there's a uh, contact between the one stream and the second stream instead of uh, using these pipes i use the plates okay this is the shell side flow this is the tube side flow uh, plate side flow the plates are stacked in such a way that hot fluid is go going from this point from this point from this point from this point and the space in between these plates is obtained by the is uh, you can say covered by the shell side flow we are getting a uh, better contact better you can say conduction and convection parameters because of this uh, efficiency is getting increase of this particular heat exchangers similarly plate and fin heat exchangers as we have already talked about the uh, plate heat exchangers over here this is a similar case of the plate heat exchangers but what we are doing is we have already studied in the heat transfer and the transfer phenomena our fins which are extended surfaces they can uh, enhance the heat transfer because of the uh, higher interfacial area so what was happening in between this is we are stacking the plates only but in the case of the plates we are providing them the fins because of this fins we are getting the extra uh, heat transfer area because of that extra heat transfer area a uh, rate of heat transfer is getting increased so you can see over here there's a, a fins contained in, in this particular plates over here a hot fluid will be uh, you can say uh, fed from the line and here will be the cold fluid this will be the cross flow because of this contact between uh, between these particular uh, fluids because of this high conductivity metal uh, plate will be getting a higher heat transfer rate similar to the the uh, fin has been extended to the feed and tube heat exchanger also you can you may also have seen this particular you can say heat exchangers and the acs and all what happen is the over there is when i want to have a better contact between the gas and the liquid okay what i'll do is i'll send a liquid in from this side i'll send, uh, get a liquid out from this side and this uh, liquid is passing through the multiple turns multiple turns through the multiple pipes uh, through a pipe with a multiple turns and but what is happening over here is these pipes are containing the extended surfaces at to high extent because of this the energy from pipe is also getting passed to the particular fins and this extended surface contains particular heat which can be removed by passing a cold air from this side you can uh, have a fan over here you can pass any particular gas or you can pass simple uh, cold air because of this cold air there will be the uh, good contact between the uh, cold air and this particular pipes and fins i'll get a better you can say low uh, you can say a better heat transfer rate from the existing techniques and the last one is micro channel heat exchangers micro channel heat exchangers is basically the same concept that is happening in the case of plate heat exchangers but the size of the micro channel heat exchanger is a very uh, low one it is uh, you can say decreased to the micro uh, level whenever i'm having a micro level you can say uh, contact between the fluid and the wall surface the energy uh, you can say energy rate of heat transfer is getting increased because of the very high interfacial surface area but the thing is over here the few uh, you can say cons over here is like there will be higher pressure drops there will be a uh, lower uh, velocity scale because ultimately my demand is that much only over here what i'm uh, achieving is i'm achieving very low resistance time for the fluids whenever i'm going for the very low resistance time i'm getting the higher efficient uh, you can say item the thing that was being uh, you can say proceeded from the within the 15 minutes now it is uh, you can say proceeded into one to two minutes or five minutes so what is happening over here first of all i'm in, uh, increase uh, i'm not increasing the flow i'm getting the same you can say uh, load conditions because of i'm saving the time another thing that, that i can go is if i want to still increase the you can say load of the process i can use the multiple heat exchangers okay in the case of process intensification since you have seen over here the feed condition will be not as much higher in the case of the uh, equipment uh, the smaller equipments because there will be a small restriction between because of the flow because as soon as as you decreasing the size of the channel you are also decreasing the feed of the channel because pressure drop conditions so this can be you can say uh, decrease because the resistance time is getting decreased as uh, as well as you have to use the multiple stacks of heat exchangers you have to use the multiple stacks of uh, reactors to obtain the you can say your product 
with the same uh, with the higher efficiency but at the same scale also this uh, microchannel heat exchanger works on the same principle as of the uh, plate heat exchangers the hot fluid goes to the consecutive uh, you can say uh, hot fluid uh, passes through the plates uh, leaving the one plate inside uh, between the uh, every channel that plate that uh, you can say channel is occupied using the cold fluid there will be a good contact between this hot fluid and uh, hot fluid and this cold fluid because of this there will be decrease in temperature with the higher heat transfer rate this wall material is basically generally of glass only some types of microchannel heat exchanger only these are the printed circuit heat exchangers for uh, over here there is a hot fluid flow from backwards there is a cold fluid flow from this place similarly these are the fin ones these are the uh, cross flow this is the shell and tube heat exchanger you can see the scale of the heat exchanger that has been decreased this is for a uh, tube side flow this is for the shell side flow i think uh, this is for the shell side flow this is for the tube side flow you can see the scale of the heat exchanger that has been decreased from the uh, uh, meters to centimeters why because there is a higher interfacial surface area similar to the uh, you can say the uh, uh, microchannel heat exchangers these this is also a, a matrix heat exchanger this is also a microchannel heat exchanger what happened over here is uh, you are getting a few sections like over here you can pass fluid 1 you can pass over here fluid 2 you can pass over here fluid 3 so you can use the multiple fluids also to uh, if you want it for the single purpose like in the case of shell and tube exchange what we generally do we will go for two fluids one is one hot fluid one cold fluid but over here i can use the multiple fluids also in uh, simultaneously i can treat the multiple fluids using the one heat exchanger these channels need not to be the circular it can be like two channel three channels finger type annular finger spiral and bound you can make it as complex as you uh, you can but by keeping one thing in mind the economics need not to be uh, you can say take need, need to be taken care of ultimately i want high, better uh, process but the cost of the process has to be the lower than, than the existing one because ultimately everything is dealt with the economics only everything has to be done for the profits only chemical industry or you can say any industry is here in the market to make money okay if i'm giving them the alternate that alternate has to be the cheaper one we talk about the efficiency we talk about the you can say safety because everything leads with the economics okay if i'm talking about the efficiency if i'm getting the 90 uh, instead of 90% i'm getting 95% efficiency i'm getting for the higher scale product if i'm going for the, the safer process or uh, uh, every section is containing the particular economics when i'm going for the safety particular uh, you can say a uh, bunch of money is going to the safety processes for the industries if i can save from that from 10% also that is giving me a huge cut from the profit cases similarly in uh, when i am talking about the environmental impacts i'm um, treating the water i'm treating the air it is uh, you can say consuming a lot of money if i can save even a 10% of that particular uh, saving uh, money i'm getting a higher profits this is that is all for the process intensification heat exchange and that is all for my you can say uh, presentation thank you very much more points well, we uh, we can also go for just like i have uh, talked about the heat transfer and the process of uh, physical methods these are also been increased into separation processes we are using the reactive distillation reactive adsorption reactive uh, extraction similar to the different type of reactor designs uh, this is a long journey which we can discuss with the next lecture yeah uh, thank you so much for your time gorav sir uh, thanks so there much. are there are just a few questions uh, about Please. the intensification it's one is that uh, the adaptability of plate and frame heat exchangers in the industries because we have seen that uh, the industries were established uh, some time or lo long time back and they are still using with uh, shell and tube heat exchangers so the plate and frame has found less adaptability in the plants a uh, very good question uh, first of all uh, let me just uh, think uh, tell you one thing whenever i'm talking about the process intensification 
these are very application specific items okay these are very specific uh, application specific you can say intensification processes when uh, in particularly uh, india you know, you know the mentality they go for one process and they dealing with the uh, same process all through all life long but actually they no, don't want to explore the options whenever uh, i'm i'm suggesting them that you can deal with this particular process there is uh, first of all a huge difference between the academic and uh, there is a huge gap between the academic and industry i'm i'm talking about a small scale industries small scale industries don't want to grow as much as the high scale industries whenever we, uh, you can go for the big scale industries you can see a lot process intensification processes already take, uh, uh, being taken care of whenever i'm going for the shell and tube to plate and heat but this all work on the particular application only i cannot use this uh, particular plate heat exchangers for the polymer purposes i cannot use this for the high viscous processes i can only uh, you can say use these processes for the low viscosity purpose because ultimately the pressure drop is a big uh, drawback in the um, basically this compact exchangers or these compact units so ultimately we need to know the economics ultimately if you are getting a better um, results with the shell and tube heat exchanger only why should i go for the plate and frame heat exchanger so if i'm taken uh, if i'm con even considering it i need to know that how much money i am you can say saving from this particular process and uh, this needs some time this needs some r and d which uh, our particular small scale industries are not you can say considering that yes sir i agree with your view point because this is um, a major uh, uh, idea of the small scale industries that they are happy to go with what they have and they don't uh, go into research as well that much true true um, you can you can see uh, uh, they have been using the same processes from the ten, uh, past 10 to 20 to 30 years they are using running the same industry with very small modifications if they are going their csr is getting uh, you can say updated uh, degraded they are use the same csr with the same design from uh, they'll fabricate the same csr and take it uh, to the next level they will be not going for the alternatives because right. this r&d consumes lot of uh, money and particularly when i'm talking yes. about this particular process intensification everything is patented and these patents are costly so this can yes. only be bearable for the high scale industries correct correct uh, and since there is uh, one more question about the type of the agitator like based on like how do we select the type of the agitator because they have uh, the blade shapes are different blade shapes are different. so first of all the in the case of um, types of agitators there's a uh, lot designs uh, like the pedals there's a turbine scale there's a normal blade so ultimately everything go, deals with the a lot of factors that need to be taken care of first of all the viscosity of the liquids that, uh, streams that we have to mix the density the velocity conditions the turbulence that we have been, there's a, uh, you can say you can find it on the uh, richardson and colson or the parrys there's um, the amount of turbulence that you want and the viscosity that we are dealing with according to those particular two conditions we have to choose the uh, first of all type of heat uh, agitators and the condition of that part agitators that we need to take on care of when i'm uh, talking about the agitators they also comes with the um, number of baffles that need to be uh, included in the particular system uh, and as well as in the case of agitators also do i need one agitator or do i need the multiple agitators okay because vortex formation is a uh, big you can say problem that has been observed in the particular agitators when we are talking about the low uh, viscosity uh, liquids so this all goes for application to application basis and as well as this this is a standard things which can be easily found in the you can say um, uh, textbooks that at what level agitation is required at what what is the uh, you can say uh, stream conditions according to these two particular things um, we can get a type of agitator that we need so thank you for your answer sir uh, Thanks, those sir. were the uh, major questions which i had so i think we can conclude the session here we would like to thank you on the behalf of chemical engineering department for thanks sir for providing your very very time and it was really a nice session about process intensification and basically the applications which you told because uh, 
uh, this subject is based on application in you know major part so there was a really good value addition to our knowledge thanks, thanks a lot sir for your time thanks a lot thank you sir